Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay, and what I got here is the Sony Distagon T-Star FE 35mm f1.4 lens. It's not exactly cheap at $1,600 US retail, but, you know, it's uh, really high quality and has a lot of top-end features that pros are going to want and, you know, serious enthusiasts. So let me break those down for you. So as you can see here, you can turn on and off the aperture click and the minimum focus distance is 12 inches or one foot, which is, you know, really close. Allows for awesome separation, as you'll see. Just like the 90 millimeter FE macro lens that I just reviewed, this also has the supersonic direct drive wave AF motor inside. As the lens comes around, you can see the circular nine blade diaphragm aperture inside. Also note the 72 millimeter lens filter thread diameter. As far as lens elements go, we have 12 elements in eight groups, and they're featuring an advanced spherical and spherical lens elements, which minimize aberrations while also reducing lens size and weight. All those lens elements do come at a cost though because this lens weighs 1.3 pounds or 630 grams. It's also 4.4 inches long, which is, you know, sizable. It does make up for it though with the build quality because it's dust and moisture resistant and feels excellent in the hands. You could definitely tell that this is really well made. The manual aperture ring dampening is just perfect. It feels like a real full-fledged Zeiss lens in that regard. The T-Star coating is the best of the best and is supposed to eliminate everything pretty much. The aperture range is f16 to f1.4 and it has the auto. Here's a closer look at the manual aperture click on and off feature, you know, and how it, you can feel it and, you know, the dampening of it. You can kind of get a sense of the dampening a little bit by watching me turn it. And here's a sample video with the aperture unclicked or off, and I'm going to put it on in a second. So you can see how smooth, you know, you can go through the range there. And then here it is on. And you can see how it gets choppy. You can also hear it. Hey guys, here we are in Lightroom, and we're going to go over some of these lab photos. But first, I just wanted to show you my YouTube channel. And I just wanted to show you real quick this support link that I added. And I really appreciate anything you guys can do. Every little bit helps. And also, there's another way you can give back. It's really easy here, just below the videos. If you look in the description area, there's a little button here to show more. And then if you scroll down, here's support links. So if you're watching a review and you want to check out the product that you're looking at, you can actually click these links and we would get a referral credit for that, basically, at no cost to you. Now let's get back to Lightroom. Sorry for the interruption. So here at F1.4, I just want to show you how sharp this sucker is in the corner. It's not bad, not bad at all. This is a raw file, really sharp. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration here you can see, purple fringing there. There's the dollar bill. So you can see it's not tack sharp at f1.4, but it's, it's definitely sharp. I mean, it's acceptable sharp. So if we stop her down to f2, things crisp up quite a bit as you can see in the corner and I'll show you down here detail the crayons and stuff here's f2.8, f4 we'll zoom in on f4 so you can get a closer look and they can really see just how sharp the lens can be all the way in the corner see that so moving on to the minimum focus distance test, show you the threads on the screw here and the separation is incredible. You can see how creamy it is. Even the lens is out of focus, the lights, very nice, very nice render. And stop down to F4, you can see how the lights render and the sharpness of the screw. Here's another angle, the lab keeps evolving and I have the trains going in another direction with a tunnel now. So here's another shot. I just wanted to show you f1.4. And you can see it looks a little bit sharper than my other test shot at f1.4 for whatever reason. And this is the train in front here, completely out of focus. And let me just show you the corner, the very corner here. And you can see it's not bad. 
not bad at all. It's very impressive for 1.4, in my opinion. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you how much vignette the lens has at f1.4 in particular. And you can also, over on the right in the lens correction area, you can enable lens profile corrections. And because I'm using an older version of Lightroom, I don't have the actual profile for this lens. So I was just playing around, and I'm using the A-mount 35mm f1.4 G lens, and it seems to work pretty good. You can also try, if you go here to the actual lens profile make, you can go to Sony FE and then give the 35mm f2.8 Zeiss lens a try, you know, and you could see the before and after. See, it fixes the vignette pretty well and the mild distortion. Of course, JPEG will correct this in camera for you. Let's move on to some real world photos, shall we? Lots of birthday parties and kids toys this time around and uh, you know it's just the way it is so here's a friend of ours Maddox and uh, man is he a cutie and I grabbed this quick snapshot of his eye and I, I, that's where the sh where I focused and um, it's a raw file and what I wanted to show you here in particular was the chromatic aberration on the specular highlights and the eyes there see that so I'm just gonna zoom in on two to one there and then I wanted to show you real quick how in the remove chromatic aberration area in the lens correction, if you select under color tab, just click this tab here and you can drag the amount for the purple color to the right to like three, see that? And now it's completely gone around the highlights here in the eye. So it's very easy to fix that problem. Because again, I don't have the profile for this specific lens. It's just not uh, available for this version of Lightroom. Moving on, you can also see how creamy the background is. It's a nice bouquet in my opinion. And here's a shot looking at some flowers on the deck and the trees are quite a bit of distance away in the background which is great for demonstrating the separation you can get. And I like the way it looks. Also on the deck you can see how the balusters render. Here's a picture of Jace. Look at this ham bone. He's so cute. He's got this awesome Tonka truck. I got to admit, I'm jealous. I love Tonka trucks. <laughs> I haven't played with them, you know, in years. I've been running back and forth with this thing. I'm not going to lie. The flowers and the crisp green Heineken bottle. Oh, it's so good. Here's a quick snapshot portrait of Layla on the swing. Nothing spectacular, but I just wanted to show you separation. And to the left here, I zoomed in. Well, I didn't zoom in. I physically moved, because it's a prime lens, of course, towards the minimum focus distance and grab this screw because I wanted to show you you know how the other screws on the other side turn into these cool bouquet balls and it's really easy to do stuff like this you just got to get close to it same thing with the air conditioner this is a really old air conditioner and if you get close to it you know you can get effects and cool stuff like this you know I think it looks cool anyway here's a flower on the deck pretty good lighting conditions bright bright conditions and you can see this lens handles it handles the highlights very well, everything. Uh, it, it's impressive. It really is. Here's Bones Jones. I love doing shots like this looking down because it, you know, depth of field falls off so quickly. And this is a raw file. I just wanted to show you. I'm on the two to one mode here. Let me go to one to one. And you can see it's pretty darn sharp. All right. And then here's an edited version. So that's the raw file, and this is just an edited version. What are you looking at? Looking at me? Yeah, so here's some more flowers. And you can see just the, the colors are gorgeous. I mean, the, the contrast, everything. You know, this lens is super high quality, bottom line. Gingerbread House, Layla made. She had a Christmas-themed birthday party, and there were some awesome decorations and stuff. Her Aunt Chrissy is just incredibly talented. Sugar straws, perfect for kids, right? Check it out. Polio string cheese. <laughs> Little snowman, how cool is that? So creative. Olaf, she's a big Frozen fan, Layla. Melted snowflakes for water. Love the way that this rendered. Reindeer chips, good stuff. Gotta love Olaf and his nose. There's Layla with two of her best friends from school in the, bar in the party. Having a great time. Another picture. Here's one of Layla's cousin, 
and you could see it wide open f1.4 it looks pretty good you can see some of that fringing here on the edge of you know the fingers and stuff high contrast areas but for wide open that's pretty darn good and you can easily correct that as I showed you before it's a raw file here's another angle there's a lawn ornament it's about three feet off the ground so you can see the grass just completely butters out there's a snapshot of my mom my dad and my brother in the background here's Layla's birthday cake how awesome is that Chrissy made that out of cupcakes so you could see the cupcakes she unbelievable I just love how thin the depth of field was you could see his tongue is sharp and like part of Chrissy's you know head here is sharp and then here's another shot of uh, Brody that actually came out uh, much better I focused on the eye here's another one so I just took a couple of quick flower shots at different apertures so you can see the background bouquet rendering this is 1.4 this is f4 and this is f8 and here's just the auto HDR from the Basher Kill Wildlife Preserve I was down there the other day so it's actually a JPEG came out okay nice color I had to go down to the Mac store the other day because my laptop hosed up. But anyways, it was at this, I think it was Nanuet Mall. Here's the actual Mac store. 35 millimeter lens covered it pretty good. You could see a little bit of distortion there on the vertical lines. Here's Layla's birthday cake. This is at F4, and I focused on the cake itself. And you can see, even at F4, the placemat is rendering out of focus. See that? So the cake was about four inches thick. It's just an advantage of full frame. You get that separation so easily. I love it. And there's my girl. The JPEG. There's a raw file. And this is a JPEG. I wanted to show you a raw versus JPEG so you can see the increase in contrast and how the camera corrects for the lens a little bit. There's another shot. This is at the minimum focus distance just to show, you know, the crayon fall off there. And this is what it's all about, guys. My buddy. Happy birthday, Layla. All right, guys, I really hope you got what you were looking for in this review. Please feel free to ask questions if you have them, as always. And uh, I really appreciate your support. Links below. Take care. <laughs>